Hi, today's video is about trivia and a little technique. If you're growing up in the 70s and 80s, you might know what this is. Yes, it's a wood racket. So I'll be sharing with you a interesting technique for you racket stringing geeks, uh, 2211 pattern. And um, yeah, I think you'll find it interesting. All right, let's go inside. All right, so today's video will be part trivia and part technique. Uh, I did post an article on the International Alliance of Racket Technicians website. So make sure you check that article. I provided the link below. And uh, I'll reveal in that article the two reasons why that 2211 pattern was used back in the day. So when I first learned how to string back in the 70s, uh, this was only a natural gut that it would, uh, some string sets would actually be cut in a 22 foot and 11 foot length and uh, not the case in synthetic gut or back then nylon strings where it was in mostly 33 foot uh, foot lengths. So anyway, I'm gonna show you the uh, technique and uh, what I would, did want to mention though on this wood racket that I'm about to string, I am taking note of uh, the pattern before I, I uh, start stringing it. So I have an identical racket here and uh, most of the rackets were 18 by 20. And you'll notice on this racket that um, the, if you count from the outside main that this is a shared hole down here. Uh, the second main, this is also a shared hole. And then the third main out here is also a shared hole. So uh, there's three on the bottom and there's actually three on top, one, two, and three. So I'm just gonna make sure that when I string this racket that I do the same because it's been a while since I've strung a wood racket. So this will be a fun um, video for uh, hopefully for you and for me to string this racket. And uh, yeah, so here we go. All right, so I have my racket mounted here and I have 22 foot length of string. And what I'm gonna do is use the racket to measure out the short side. So uh, on one of my other videos, I, I always use the, the frame itself to measure out the length of string that I need. So I have it from the tip of the racket head to the tension head on the first. And then I'm just gonna count nine, uh, again, because there's 18 mains. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's gonna be enough to finish the mains on one side of the racket. And the other side, the long side will be used to string the mains and six of the crosses uh the bottom crosses going from top to bottom so uh, what i'm gonna do is it doesn't matter which side i put the short side what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna start a little bit differently i usually use the yusuke method to start my mains but i'm just gonna go i don't have um the racket doesn't have a throat, so it's gonna be awkward to put a starting clamp there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, put my starting clamp here today, right behind that string clamp. And I'll go ahead and start the mains on one side. And I like to do two at a time, but I go two and then four on the other side. So there's always gonna be two more mains um, than the previous side and uh, again you should never go more than three. Oh, let me show you what I'm doing over here so uh, you'll notice that on some wood rackets um, that and this one I did you'll notice that sometimes there's leather pads in the bottom sometimes rackets will have plastic pieces uh, these are power pads so uh, on these wood rackets, you would typically see that at the uh, at the bottom in the throat area, where uh, the first four mains go uh, are in, when they're installed. There's these uh, power pads that are installed. It's mainly to protect the uh, frame and the string in that uh, awkward angle area. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that power pad there. I'm gonna come back to the, uh, the right side of the racket. And then um, install the power pad. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and come back to you after I install all the mains and then show you how I would start the crosses with the uh, the long side of this 22 foot length string. So again, uh, let me finish this power pad right here. All right, so I'm on the last main on each side. Earlier I mentioned that I would be installing nine on each side. So this is the ninth main on the short side here. And I have barely enough to reach the tension head. So I'm gonna just go ahead and use a, a bridge here using my starting clamp. And we're gonna end up, end up tying off this ninth main at the bottom. So. So uh, earlier I mentioned that there's gonna be three shared holes at the bottom of the frame. So if this is the first one right here, the second one is the next one here, the third one, I need to make sure that I tie off on the fourth main from the outside of the frame so that I don't interfere with the shared hole that the crosses are gonna go into. So I'm right now tying off on that fourth main from the outside. To allow for that all right so on this side the long side of the uh, 22 foot length of string I'm on that ninth main now I need to make sure I put this clamp high enough so that it'll allow for the string to pass through for that first cross that I'm gonna weave one two three four five six so I'm just making sure that I'm gonna clamp up high enough so I have room for that so, so again, the three shared holes will be one here, two here, and three. So I need to come up here to get to that sixth uh, cross. So basically, I'm gonna I'm gonna weave six of the crosses from from this point down to the bottom and complete the last cross. So. I'll go ahead and um, tension this right here. And I'll come back to you when I'm on that last cross. All right, I just completed weaving and tensioning the fifth cross. And again, I was starting from kind of like the middle of the frame going downwards. And I'm on that last sixth cross here. And what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna do a half diagonal weave and this is useful for natural gut especially, or you could even use it with polyester that's really uh, textured or shaped. And what you're gonna do is just weave half the way through and just go ahead and pull it through. And you know, do it slowly. You wanna make sure you're not gonna notch the string, but you're doing it at a diagonal. You're not pulling it straight at 90 degrees. So if there is room, uh, this racket hardly has room because it's so small, but and then you're just gonna pick up where you left off. Just make sure that the weave is correct when you uh, start the weave from the middle of that string. And then you're gonna just uh, put it through. And again, with natural gut, you wanna make sure you're always making sure that the uh, fibers uh, don't unravel. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and tie this off. And on the short side, I did tie off on that fourth main from the outside. So I'll do the same for this string here. And they'll be on the same string on both halves of the racket. All right, so that's the mains and six of the bottom crosses. All right, so now we're ready to install the 11 foot length of string. And before I start, you need to make sure you start in the correct side of the uh, frame. So you have to make sure that you look for the specific holes that the string would fall into in the proper groove. So uh, I just checked for that. So I need to start from here. Now, if I were to actually weave this through 
and this is the seventh cross and then tie off right here with a starting knot and then have to uh, get the end of the string to do the eighth cross I would actually having I would actually have to pull the entire length of string to um, to do that so instead of doing that I would actually go to the eighth cross and work backwards and that'll reduce the amount of string you have to pull through and also reduce the chances of notching the main. So I did another video and I'll, I'll provide the link below regarding reducing friction in situations like that. And that's um, in today's rackets. I mean, you, you can use that technique when you're stringing any two piece racket. And that's really helpful for uh, polyester strings that are textured or shaped and uh, yeah, so that'll, again, reduce the amount of friction and notching. All right, so what I'm gonna do is tie off here. Normally I would use a starting clamp and clamp it on the outside, pull tension, tie off. But after you release the clamp, there's gonna be a little bit of slack that's gonna actually make the string looser. So like similarly to these tie offs on the side, um, or actually on this side, um, you know, you lose a little bit of tension after you tie off because there's a little bit of slack on the outside of the frame. So I'm not gonna use a starting clamp because I wanna just make sure that this sixth cross and the seventh cross are gonna be, you know, about the same tension. So in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and do a starting knot right on top of this uh, sixth cross and then just pull tension right on that seventh cross and uh, do it that way instead of using the starting clamp. Okay, so I got my starting knot there. I'm gonna go ahead and pull tension. And I'm holding the knot just to make, just make sure it holds. All right, so it's right there. And All right, so what I'm gonna do is weave the rest of the racket. Again, you're going from bottom to top, and by now you might be able to figure out why the 2211 was actually a good pattern for natural gut. Uh, if you don't know, again, the article will reveal the answer. But uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish these crosses, and I'll see you when I reach the top. All right, I'm on the last cross, the 20th cross. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and weave this through. And again, you, when you get into very tight spaces, uh, especially if you're working with natural gut, uh, this is where it can tend to unravel on you or twist. So even though this is a fairly easy weave because I'm still doing the one ahead, uh, I'm gonna show you that diagonal pull again. So. Let's say if I didn't have this much string length, so I'm gonna go ahead and actually tension this string. All right, so I weaved uh, half of that cross already. So what I'm gonna do is just make sure that as I'm pulling this through, that I'm going very slowly, but also at an angle. The other thing that helps on a natural gut is to kind of pull it and not really twist it, but make sure that you are actually holding it so you're normally gonna go in a clockwise uh, direction. So you just wanna make sure that the gut stays twisted the way it should be. Uh, if you were to go the other direction, counterclockwise, it would actually unravel the string. So uh, today's gut is pretty good though. It's just back in the day, it was uncoated a lot of times. So gut could really fall apart on you if you're not careful. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the second half of this 20th cross. And again, I'm just gonna make sure I go very slowly. And when you get to this loop right here, just make sure it just slides right into place. And tension right here. All right, so we'll go ahead and tie off this last cross right here. It's 
So I don't know if you could figure it out yet why the 2211 pattern was actually a good pattern to use for natural gut. Uh, like I said, I, I use this for everything, even some uh, nylon strings, just as a signature because it was just uh, something that I um, thought was kind of unique and I just it just carried over into all of my string jobs. All right, so we got the uh, 11 foot piece in and that's a 2211. So So yeah, here you go. There, there it is. So in today's uh, video, you know, I did go over some old school stringing technique, but you know, we did the half diagonal pull for natural gut, especially when you get into tight spaces. I, uh, I did the, the cross, the eighth cross going ahead and working backwards. Uh, that also helps with friction and notching. So hopefully you learned something from this video. Um, I had fun stringing this racket, so thanks for watching. Stringing this racket really brought me back to old times. In fact, if you check out my article, you'll see pictures of some old packaging of what the string sets look like, the 2211 string sets. So uh, anyway, happy stringing and let your strings play.